Good evening, folks. It's time again for our Wednesday night devotional. From the ideas we're getting from Uncle John's bathroom reader. And now, I've been known to really tell some corny jokes. Uh, and the, the congregation here has a lot of fun with it, and I have a lot of fun with them. But now, this isn't my joke. This is a joke I found in this um, information from Uncle John's bathroom reader. And this week... We're going to be looking at odd new animals. But here's the question. What do whales say in secret whale language when they're hungry? The answer? We could tell you, but then we'd have to kill you. Okay, now check out these stories about bizarre animal species, all discovered in the last few years. The first one is the Burmese snub-nosed monkeys. Discovered in early 2010, Swiss anthropologist Thomas Geisman was shown the carcass of a monkey found in northern Burma. It appeared to be a species unknown to science. Geisman organized search teams and over the course of the following year managed to get glimpses of a few living species. In January 2012, an automated camera got the only known photo of one of the creatures. So why is this creature considered odd? Well, the Burmese snub-nosed monkey has mostly black fur, a pale pinkish face, prominent red lips, and white ear tufts, and a line of white hairs along its chin. It also has, it also has its name that's suggested because of very tiny, almost non-existent nose. There are many species of snub-nosed monkeys in Asia, but this one's nose is so stubby that it has two teardrop-shaped nostrils in the center of its upturned face. According to locals, one like scientists, have known about the species for some time. It's not hard to find the monkey, especially when it's raining. Their unprotected nostrils collect water when it rains, causing them to sneeze. That's why locals explained Burmese snub-nosed monkeys prefer to wait out the rain reigns with their heads bent forward between their knees. Here's another odd animal. It's called the Pinocchio frogs. An international team of climate researchers was exploring the remote Foja Mountains in the island of New Guinea in 2008. We were sitting around eating lunch, Smithsonian ornithologist Chris Malinsky said, later when hyper- Hypatologist Paul Oliver looked down and there's this little frog on a rick sack and he managed to grab the thing. It was a tiny green tree frog with very large eyes and one strange feature. And this is why this animal is odd. The frog had a very long skinny pointed nose that hung down over its mouth and it was inflatable. When the frog made one of its froggy calls, the long pointy nose filled with air and stood straight up. When the call ended, the nose deflated and hung down over the frog's mouth again. When it called again, up his nose went and so on. For obvious reasons, the researchers dubbed this little friend the Pinocchio frog. Further study found that only the males have the inflatable noses, but scientists still don't know why they have them. Well, one thing is for sure that both of these newly found animals are peculiar in their species and what they do. Animals of all kinds created by God have their own peculiarities. The elephant has a long trunk. The ostrich has long legs and neck. The turkey has a unique call. All of God's creatures are unique or particular in some way, shape, or form. And so it is with the Christian. We are peculiar people, made so uniquely by the saving grace of God. We have a calling that saves the world from sin. We are fearfully and wonderful, wonderfully made in the image of God. We live in this world, but not of this world. Our citizenship is in heaven and not on this earth. We are a unique species created by God to serve God and to be an instrument for God. This is what we read and understand in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
a peculiar people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Let's conclude the prayer. Our Father in heaven, once again we come before your throne of mercy and compassion to thank you for your love and care and your mercy. To thank you, dear God, for all the things that you've created on this earth and how each thing is unique in the way in which you've created it. We especially see that in uh, the animals that we have here on the face of this earth. But dear God, you have also created something that when man has given his life to you through his son, that we also become a peculiar creation for you and for your kingdom, dear God. We not only become your children, but we become a people that no longer live of the world, no by the world, no through the world, but we live for you, for your will and for your purpose. We live to serve you and serve you only. We live to be an instrument for you and for you only. As Peter said, we are a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. And we're peculiar because of what we proclaim. We proclaim you who called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We proclaim you because once we were people that were not of you, dear God. But now, because we have obtained mercy, we are your people to live for you and serve you. So help us, dear God, to continue to be the peculiar people that you call us to be. We continue to share your message to a lost and dying world in sin. We continue to encourage one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. And that we continue, dear God, to do all things for your glory and for your honor. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Lord willing, we'll come to you Sunday morning with the Sunday morning lesson. And I mentioned last week that we may stop the recordings because we are, beginning the first Sunday in April, going to go back to all our normal services that we had before the pandemic. But in thinking about it and praying about it, we do have some brothers and sisters in Christ here that are not still quite able to get out, to be around other people, and to make it to church services. So I'm going to continue with these recordings on Wednesday night and Sunday morning. And possibly you're one of those type of people that although you um, are capable to get to the grocery store and thing, you're still not quite capable to get to church where there is a large crowd of people or whatever the situation or circumstances is. This video will continue for you as well. So thank you for allowing me to come into your home Thank you for allowing me to share the message of God with you. And I pray that it will be fruitful for you. It would be knowledgeable and that it would encourage you in every which way that it can. Thank you. Have a great rest of the week. God bless and bye-bye.